You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. You often hear supporters and commentators speak about patterns of play, philosophies or team systems in football. But what exactly do those terms refer to? Well, coaches and clubs at most levels have begun implementing what is known as a game model, which are often based on the 10 phases of play and are used to guide the player's actions, behaviours and decision-making processes during each phase. The 10 phases of play are broken down into different categories and subcategories. The four main ones are in possession, out of possession, transitions and set pieces, with each one having its own subcategories. For instance, when a side is in possession, the three phases are generally based on the location of the ball. Starting from the back, typically from a goal kick or when the goalkeeper has the ball in their hands, the in-possession side starts the build-up phase. They attempt to break the first line of opposition pressure through various principles such as always maintaining one player extra in relation to the opposition front line playing with high tempo and few touches, and always attempting to offer both vertical and lateral support to the ball carrier, which increases simple passing options. Once the first ball has been successfully progressed into the middle third of the pitch, the team is then considered to be in the progression phase. Once the in-possession side has arrived into the progression phase, they must then look to move the ball into the final third by overcoming the opposition block. Typically, this can be done by playing the ball around, through or over the block. To create these types of situations, there are some key principles which the team may follow to increase their chances of successfully progressing the ball, often including maintaining width with one player on each flank to stretch the opposition laterally and runs in behind the back line to stretch the block vertically. Positional rotations can also create space and chaos in the opponent's defensive shape, and the creation of triangles in wide areas is also a key for many sides when attempting to progress the ball. After the team has built play through the first two thirds of the pitch, the side will now have established possession in the final third. This phase has various names ranging from creation to finishing, but the main goal of the phase, of course, is to create scoring opportunities. In the attacking third of the pitch, many teams will look to overload the opposition backline by attacking with five to six players across their attacking line and maintaining balance behind them with either a 2-3 structure or a 3-2 structure. With five players across the front line, the team is able to occupy space across the entirety of the pitch. In order to do this, teams will also attempt to switch the point of attack quickly to the opposite side, trying to set up 1v1 and 2v1 situations. For each of the three in-possession phases, there is an out-of-possession phase that mirrors them. These are also typically defined by the geographic location on the pitch, and are most often known as simply high block, mid block and low block. When the opposition is attempting to play out from the back, and the side out-of-possession attempts to pressure them high up the pitch, they are considered to be defending with a high block. Some teams will look to initiate an out-to-in press, forcing the opposition centrally, while others employ the in-to-out system, forcing the opposition to wide areas of the pitch. These types of systems are achieved through the use of pressing with a cover shadow and bending their runs during pressure. Pressing as a unit and playing with a high and aggressive backline is key to compressing the time and space for the opposition. Once the initial press has been broken, the defending team will drop their shape back into a mid-block. In this phase, the back line will continue to stay relatively high and aggressive, and the block will often attempt to force the play around to the wide areas, using the sideline as an extra defender. Minimising space between the lines becomes more critical while simultaneously shifting side to side to try to keep numerical superiority around the ball. The low block is where more examples of emergency defending may occur. Remaining extremely compact with short distances between each line of players and players within each line is vital. Preventing the opposition from carrying or receiving between the lines will also allow for protection of the most dangerous areas in front of goal while forcing the opposition into wider areas. However, once they are forced wide towards the end line, preventing cutbacks and crosses is also an important principle for nearly every side. 
But while one team is always in possession and the other team out of possession, the moments in which possession changes from one team to the other is when transitions occur. The moments of transition are very quick, tending to last between 5 to 8 seconds. When a team loses possession, they must choose between a few key options which are dependent on the current balance of the team. If players are close to the ball, they are able to quickly counter-press in an attempt to retrieve possession as quickly as possible. But if the team is unbalanced and there are large distances to the ball, the better option may be to delay the ball carrier and return to the defensive shape as quickly as possible. Upon regaining possession of the ball, teams tend to have two options. If the opposition is unbalanced and there is space behind them to attack, the right choice may be to counter-attack quickly towards the goal. If not, the better option might be to play the first pass out of pressure and attempt to establish possession and enter the next phase of play. Set pieces, accepted as a phase of play by most, are a hugely important part of the game, though they can often be overlooked. For every attacking set piece, there is of course a defensive set piece for the opposition. These include free kicks, corners, penalties, throw ins, and even kickoffs. With football becoming increasingly dissected and analysed, principles and sub principles for each phase will only continue to develop. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.